You won't believe this. The United States versus the EU global speed test comparison when it comes to Starlink. Check this out. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Today we have a little bit of fireside and that is it. That smokiness of the lap song, guys, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is going to be a Starlink day. This is something that a lot of you guys want me to do every single month. And it is a Starlink reliability and speed month in review, let's call it. And a lot of you guys want me to do this every month to keep you abreast of what is going on. I have all kinds of programs running so that I'm continuously testing so I know exactly what's going on with the service. I know when it's down, I know when it's up, I know when it's doing absolute crap, and I know when it's doing really, really well also. So what I've done is I've taken a comparison between all of them, an average, a mean, let's say, and we're gonna do it together today. So there's a couple of things that we're gonna to do today. Number one, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about reliability when it comes to my specific unit. As you guys know, I just went through Hurricane Ian. Number two, I wanna get into the actual speed test. What are the results? And we're gonna do some live right now to show you exactly what's going on. It's about eight, nine o'clock in the morning. We're not in peak hours as they would call them. So we should have maximum speed. And we're down here in South Florida. The skies are 100% blue and it's probably about 70 degrees outside with very little humidity. So this would be optimum time for Starlink to shine. Something like that. And number three, I want to show you something that I find to be absolutely startling. A channel member sent me over a link to go check this out. And what it is, it's a gathering of data, of speeds throughout the globe for the last year of use of Starlink. And so we have data from the US, we have data from France and from the UK and from all over the place. And we can see how over the last 12 months, has speeds fluctuated between all of these countries. Once again, I find it to be fascinating and kind of startling. And I wanna get your opinion on that also. So let's start out from the top with reliability. Now, some of you guys asked, how was it? How did it fare during Hurricane Ian? And the bottom line was it fared well. Now the unit itself is mounted on the roof with a short mount. So if you went over to Starlink's website, you can see a short mount, that's what it's called. It mounts to the eave. And that had absolutely no problem going through 40 to 50 to 60 mile per hour sustained winds and some gusts probably right around 90 to 100 miles per hour when we got these little micro tornadoes that came whipping through. So the unit itself held up really well. It had absolutely no problem. Now, when it comes to the actual speed or the usability during the hurricane or even before the hurricane, well, that's a little bit something different. Bear in mind, all satellite type of antennas have the same problem when it comes to air quality. If it's raining and there's a lot of moisture in the air or if there is a lot of smoke, for example, or heavy cloud cover or trees waving back and forth in front of the unit, it's going to have a problem. Now. I don't have a problem with the trees. Well, we did have a problem with the rain. We experienced it, just extreme rain fade when it comes to this unit. Now I've heard with the generation one, the round dishy, or as I call them, Mr. Bevel, they don't have as much problems, let's say with the round one, but with the rectangular one, there's a little bit more issues. Don't know why, but that just simply is the case. So while we had no problem with the thing actually withstanding extremely high speed winds, sustained winds, we did have a problem with connectivity as soon as it started raining. And this happens even during severe thunderstorms here down in South Florida, we will lose service. Not great, but that's just the way it is. And I think that's the nature of the beast. Is there any way to change that? Probably not. Maybe if we had the commercial grade antenna, the big one, the office one that's like larger, that maybe has a bigger footprint and be able to suck down a little bit more information. I don't know. 
Now the next thing would be speeds. And I wanna show you some real world speeds. And what I'll do is I'll probably pop them up all over the screen, because if not, we'll be sitting here for 10, 15 minutes as we go through all of these speeds. Now I'm gonna show you speeds based on speedtest.net, which is through Ookla. And then I'm gonna also compare and contrast that to speeds that are coming right out of the Starlink router. Because some people have said, Joe, you really need to do those tests through the router. Other people say, no, use Ookla because that is more standard and everyone can, whatever. So I did both. And then I'm gonna show you a direct comparison. We're doing 10 tests today. One, once again, on Ookla and 10 tests right through the Starlink itself. And as I said before, it is early morning, so there should be no problems. It is pristine weather. But before we get into that, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, why the hell not? Go download them. They're 100% free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you like Starlink content, please check out my Starlink playlist. There is a ton that's getting close to probably 100 videos on that Starlink playlist. A lot of helpful how-tos and tricks and tips and what to buy and what not to buy and why to buy it, right? Or why not to buy it? Very important too. Check that out. And if you like this video, even in the least, consider throwing it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. Also, if you have not subscribed as of yet, please consider doing so. And if you are, Click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So let's check out some of these speed tests. Now these speed tests, once again, are through Ookla. And I'm gonna run these, like I said, on the screen so you can see them just to verify that I am doing them. I'm not just coming up with numbers. Now the 10 speed tests that I did came up like this. I'm gonna give you the download speed and then the upload speed in that order. 140 by 15. 191 by 15, 152 by 9, 67 by 8, 168 by 8, 113 by 9, 109 by 14, 173 by 13, 93 by 13, and finally 167 megabits down by 7 megabits up. And now if you do a total of these and an average dividing them by 10, we end up with 1,372 divided by 10. We get 137.2 download speed. If we do the same thing with the upload, we get 111. Divide that by 10, we end up with 11.1 .1 megabits up per second. So that's not too bad. We've heard that Starlink is saying that we're going to provide at least 100 megabits down and 10 megabits up. And I've said this in the past, it feels like the download speed is not as throttled as the upload speed. When you upload, what ends up happening is you can see it just like spike up to 15, 20, 25 megabits per second, and then immediately say, oh shit, and then just drop right back, right? And then slowly come back to that 10 megabits or even drop to nine or eight or seven, so on and so forth, right? This just, that is just classic throttling, all right? I don't care what they say. That is throttling, period, all right? Some people say, oh no, it's not really throttling. You know, they're doing this and it's just because of, no, it's throttling, all right? I've been doing this for long enough. It's throttling. Anyway, so we did the exact same test right now, a minute after, and now we're doing it within Starlink's internal speed testing. So we're gonna log into the Starlink app right from our computer. If you don't know how to do that, you simply go to 192.168.100.1 and that will bring you over to Dishy or for me, Mr. Bevel. And then we can take a look at all of the information there. So once again, I'm gonna run the speed test on the screen so you can see those running so you know that I'm actually doing them. Once again, this speed test happened immediately after doing the Ookla speedtest.net test. And we got 116 by eight, 86 by one, yes, by one megabit up, horrible. Then 141 by one, 104 by seven, 117 by five, 106 by 11, 132 by 12, 202 by 22, it's getting good now, 183 by 21, 199 by 21. That's our 10 tests. If you guys are keeping track, you wanna do your calculations just in case I screwed it up, please do so. We ended up with 1,386 divided by 10, we get 138.6 download speed. As far as upload, we end up with 109 divided by 10, 
which equals 10.9 megabits up. So basically we end up with the exact same results. On Ookla, we end up with a down speed of an average of 137.2. On the Starlink proper, we end up with 138.6, within a meg of each other, even less. That is crazy. And also we can see the average from Ookla being 11.1, .1, whereas the average here on the dish itself is 10.9. Let's call it 11. They're almost identical. So as you can see, we are averaging that 10 megabits that they promise. And the download speed is about, for me, let's call it 138 down. Even though we get some crazy speeds every once in a while where they're over 200, back to the old days, right? And up speeds of well over 20, 25. I think we got a couple of 22s. So really quite good. The problem is, is it's not sustained. It varies a lot. And I think that for me, I would rather have something steady in comparison to just crazy burst and then really slow and then bursting and then slow, it just makes things just harder to deal with, especially if you're going to be streaming or something like that. You don't know what you have to be able to use. So let's say you're using OBS and you're streaming through it. You don't know what to set up that up speed to because you don't know how much data rate you have. Whereas for me, with my AT&T, for example, I have 15 megs down and 1.5 up. So I know 1.5 is all that I have. That's what I can max out with the OBS, for example, if I was streaming. Whereas this, sometimes we end up with 22 megs up and other times, as we can see, we're ending up with one meg up. So that is just such a major disparity. It just really makes it difficult. So now that we have the internal speed test for our Starlink here, how about some external? Globally, what is Starlink doing as of today? Well, a really great member of the channel pointed me to a website that gives us just that information. It is awesome. And I was startled in the least to find out the results here. I just could not believe it. Now I'm gonna share this website. Let's go on this little journey together. I'll probably put it in the link so you can go there also. If you're just listening to me through a podcast, the website is called starlinkstatus.space, all right? Starlinkstatus.space. If you look at the top, you can see the location where my pop is. Of course, it's in Atlanta, Georgia. My external IP address, the IP network, so on and so forth. I will blur that out. But more importantly, if we come down here, we can see the overall averages based on different countries. We have the US, Canada, Great Britain, Australia, Germany, France, New Zealand, Netherlands, they're all here. And it shows how many stations are in each. We see the US has 36 stations, Australia has nine, Canada has eight, Great Britain six, so on and so forth. Now. These are averages, all right? And we see an average ping worldwide of 48.14 milliseconds. We have an average download speed of 134.6 and an average upload speed of 13.74. And that just makes sense because that is the, almost the exact results that we're getting. We're getting that 130s, right? And we're getting about 11, let's call it meg up. They're getting about an average of 13.7, so we're a little bit slower than average. So for me, this is pretty good, but I think I might be an anomaly because it gets worse, and we're going to get to that in just a second. Now, take a look at the U.S. averages. The average ping in the U.S. is 50, the average download is 106, and the average upload is 11. And the EU, we're seeing an average ping of 42, download of 165 and upload of 17.4. That is a big difference between the EU and the US. Now, if we come down here and we take a look at the megabits per second map, the averages country by country, we can see the red color is US and then we have the UK, Germany, France, so on and so forth. But now look at these colors. Look at what's going on here. If we see, now remember, this is a one year period of time. If we come back here to October when all of this started, do you see where the US was a year ago at about 150 megabits? And then it slowly started petering all the way back down. We're getting lower and lower and lower. We're down to under 100. Right here, we're hitting 83 megabits on average. We move into March, we're seeing an average of 70 megabits. 
We move into April. We're seeing an average of 76 megabits. Then we come into July, once again, 77. Move into August. This is the United States, people, 77. And only until last month, right around September, things started increasing. We got to 80, then 85, 90, 100 right around here. Finally, we peaked out at 125, and now we're dropping back to 104. Do you see what's going on here, right? This has been abysmal for the last year. And this is why, in my personal opinion, why I think Starlink was not getting those monies, let's say, that funding from the government. But now look at the teal, for example. The teal is France. If we come back here to the beginning of the year, they're seeing about, let's call it 230. And then we move forward. We're seeing about 250. We keep on going forward to April. They're getting anywhere between 200 and 210. We keep moving forward here to July. And what are we in? We're over 200 once again, 233. We move into September. Where are they? 229. It has been since the beginning of the year all the way until now. And if we look at today, they're at 250 plus. So since the very beginning, France has just been amazing when it comes to speed. But that's not just it. Let's just look at the UK, for example. The UK started right around here at about 170. About half year, the UK was still right around 144. Moving into July, the UK was right around 144. And now, as of today, the UK is averaging 163. So my question is, why are we seeing New Zealand and France at 250 megabits down where we're sitting down here at an average of 104? I would like to know. Even the UK today is at 163. You're seeing Germany at 167 today. You're seeing France at 252. You're seeing Australia at 200, New Zealand at 256, and even Canada are sitting at 123, 124. Why are we at 104? That's my question. Maybe it has to do with saturation. Could that be? There's still the same number of satellites rotating around the Earth, right? So maybe it's just the number of people that have got onto Starlink in the U.S. is exponentially more than overseas. That could be. But whatever the case is, I think that these numbers are just hard data that show the disparity globally with Starlink. How the United States, as of the very beginning, literally 365 days ago until now, has still been getting the shit end of the stick. So, does that mean that something needs to be rectified? Or does that mean that overseas we're going to see a dump back down to our speeds of that 100 by 10 that they're trying to get to? for general residential service. I don't know. I would like to hope to see more instead of less. Because when I started this journey, we were sitting close to 300 meg down and anywhere from about 30 to 40 meg up. I would like to see that yet again. Will we? I don't know. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know what you think about this. And if you want to check out that website, please go check that out. I'll put a link in the comment as well as the pinned description. Very cool stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed this content. If you have, please consider throwing it a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Share it with your friends, family, colleagues, as I always say, and subscribe to the channel. If you have not, as of yet, please do so. Subscribe. One last thing, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.